Ethiopia, the country of crosses and cross makers. In this film, you're going to see images of a world that has come to an end. These scenes were filmed before the revolution. You might have witnessed similar scenes a thousand years ago. They will never be the same again. Lalibela, the heart of Christian Ethiopia. This church was carved in the shape of a cross. It was cut from the solid rock. Pilgrims come to Lalibela from all over the Christian highlands. Here amongst the 11 rock churches, Christmas is celebrated just as it's been celebrated since the Middle Ages. The chants and dances of the church singers, the Debterers, have reminded many observers of scenes from the Bible. It is thought they resemble the chants and dances of the Israelites. Christianity has survived in the Ethiopian highlands since it became the official religion of the Kingdom of Aksum in the year 333 AD. Up until the time that Emperor Haile Selassie was deposed, there had been few changes in the social order or in the lives of the average Ethiopian since the Portuguese travelled there in 1520. Francisco Alvarez wrote, All the priests, monks and lords carry crosses in their hands, both on foot and on horseback. And the laymen and the common people carried little crosses around their necks. The cross meant stability and survival. Since the death of the emperor and the overthrow of the social order, everything is in a state of flux. The Ethiopian Orthodox faith follows many Old Testament traditions. Some of the customs are distinctly Judaic, such as the dancing and shaking of sistra or rattles during the celebration of Mass. The Debterers dance and rattle their sistra like David and his people dancing around the ark. Even wandering minstrels participate. The emperors of Ethiopia claimed descent from King Solomon through his legendary union with the Queen of Sheba, a claim much mocked and derided after the revolution. Lalibela was conceived as the New Jerusalem, just a few years after the Holy City fell into the hands of the Arabs. From the 13th century, Christianity had to defend itself against the advancing tide of Islam. A 
Although threatened from all sides by enemies of the religion, Ethiopia has survived as the outpost of the cross, only to be challenged from within. The provisional military government changed everything. Ethiopia, the country where bullets and spent shells are melted down to make crosses. And where crosses are melted down to make bullets for the soldiers' guns. The soldier belongs here just as much as the priest. Religion and warfare, the bullet and the cross, twin impulses of the Ethiopian spirit. Listen now to part of the text worn or carried by the faithful on parchment scrolls. It illustrates the mystical and superstitious fervor which the Ethiopians have towards the cross. On the cross alone I do depend. It is my fortress and my strength. Cross, light of the blind, savior of the whole world, cross above all things. Cross, destroying the enemy, Cross, spear and shield of the church. Cross, the martyr's crown. Cross, refuge of the poor. Cross, succor of the afflicted. Cross, the virtue of the just. Cross, strength and power of the weary. Cross, making the dumb speak. Cross, ear of the deaf and faith of the saints. Cross guide to the blind. Cross wood of life. Cross wood of salvation. Cross calm of the sea. Cross bread of the hungry. Cross fountain of the thirsty. Cross clothing of the naked. Cross the rod that struck Satan. Hallelujah. Cross my faith. Hallelujah. Cross my light, cross my hope, cross my succor, cross my grace. The cross was made and the high was brought low and the low was raised up. Some of the celebrations and processions carry one right back to the time of Christ. Timkut, or Epiphany, celebrates the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan. On that day, the Arks of the Covenant from the different churches are carried on the heads of the priests, draped with brightly colored material like the priests themselves. All night long, church singers have chanted and danced around the Arks of the Covenant. For three days, they dance and sing. Another important festival celebrates the finding of the True Cross by Empress Helena, the mother of Constantine the Great. It was Constantine who started to promote the use of the cross as a symbol of the faith when he was converted to Christianity in the year 312 AD. Christians probably didn't start to make models of the cross until after Empress Helena's visit to Jerusalem where she discovered the true cross. Ethiopians believe that part of the true cross was brought to their country in the 14th century by one of their own emperors, David I. During Timket, or Epiphany, the Arks are carried back to their respective churches in a joyful procession. The dancing becomes quite wild and animated. It's accompanied by the harp of David as well as by the drum. crosses are still made by the lost wax process. A hand cross is to be made. A square sheet of beeswax is designed with one of the traditional cross patterns. This is the center square of what will be a diamond-shaped hand cross. 
This method of casting metal was used by the Egyptians four and a half thousand years ago. In Ethiopia, the technique has been handed down from generation to generation. The other bits are joined to the center square. These are called the finials. separately. Soft clay is prepared by one of the girls. It is mixed with shredded sacking. The wax model is now covered with clay. spaces are carefully filled in. Curious to think that in Ethiopia all kinds of craftsmanship were considered low-class activities in the past. People who worked with their hands were looked down on, so the originality and achievements of the crossmakers is all the more remarkable. model is completely encased with clay. A hole is left in the bottom to allow the wax to escape. After being left to dry in the sun, the clay-covered wax cross is placed in the forge. The clay is baked hard. Bellows made of sheepskin are used. cross which was inside the clay melts away through the channel left for this purpose. The crossmaker has to be sure that all the wax has melted away. Scraps of metal are put into the crucible. Used shell cases are a common ingredient. They are in plentiful supply since the military came to power. The shell cases are mixed with pieces of zinc and other base metals like tin. The alloy varies. The crucible is placed in the forge. It takes a lot of hard work before the melting point of the metals is reached. This boy worked non-stop for two hours before the metal melted. A piece of zinc is added at the end. The crucible is taken out of the forge. The molten metal is poured in through the channel in the clay moulds. A number have already been prepared. The 
the metal runs into all the little spaces where the wax models were. The brass cross is revealed with its rough edges and other imperfections. The cross is filed smooth. The quality of the finished cross depends on the care taken in filing and in decorating it. Few of these crosses are intended for use in churches. Most of them are bound for the market, although special orders will be placed from time to time when the villagers club together to present a local priest with a new cross. One member of the family files crosses while another decorates them. Lines are incised and little circles are stamped on the surface. In the olden days, more elaborate decoration was attempted, but present-day craftsmen work faster and are less ambitious. When the handle has been fixed on, the cross is ready to be consecrated in church or to be bargained over in the market. Dealers do good business in Lalibela market. In this part of the country, everyone wears a neck cross or has a pattern tattooed on the forehead. For a long period, the Christian Highlanders fought with the people of the lowlands. In about 1450, Emperor Zara Yaakob issued a decree in order not to be confused with the enemy, every Ethiopian will henceforth wear a cross suspended at the neck. The poor, those who do not have the means to buy themselves one, can wear a blue ribbon around their necks. From the time of Zara Yaakob, Ethiopians made large numbers of neck crosses in an infinite variety of forms. Pierre Petridis pioneered the study of crosses and is the leading authority on the subject. These are some of his beautiful and rare long-stemmed crosses found only in Ethiopia. Some people argue that certain designs were influenced by the Coptic Egyptians or the Portuguese, but in Ethiopia there are many original forms and designs which resemble no others. Petridis estimates them as more than 200. These round crosses were made by the newly Christianized peoples of southern Ethiopia. The circular shapes suggest that they haven't forgotten their moon and sun worship. The Star of David, also known as the Solomonic Cross, was originally worn by royalty. This is a model of the oldest Ethiopian cross, which can be dated with certainty. King Tanta Utum, who reigned between 980 and 1020 AD, gave it to a church, the inscription says. This cross, with a classic Lalibela form, dates from the 10th or 11th century. It was nearly lost, like so many others, when a church was burned by invading Muslims. It's been slightly damaged by fire. Few wooden crosses can have survived, but we mustn't neglect the art of the wood carvers. Some of their carving is exquisite. This is an altar cross the type kept on the altar and used for blessing the congregation at the end of the church service. On one side of this 15th century cross, an artist has painted St. George and the Dragon. St. George is a popular saint in Ethiopia. On the other side, the artist has painted the Madonna and Child. It can be seen in the University Museum in Addis Ababa. Francisco Alvarez, 
saw no painted crosses at the time of his travels in 1520, but some crosses of the late 14th and early 15th centuries seem to contradict his observations. On no cross is a crucifix painted, neither have they any of solid carving, because, they say, they are not deserving to see Christ crucified. This cross has a human figure as a handle, like Atlas supporting the world. The legend of how the cross stemmed from the tree of paradise is popular in Ethiopia. Some say the human figure could be Adam carrying a crown made of this wood. Every cross continues to be made by families engaged in the cottage industry. The mold for every cross made by the lost wax method can be used only once, and the decoration on every cross is slightly different. Whether carved from solid rock like this cruciform church at Lalibela, or shaped from a small piece of silver like the neck cross worn by this little girl, or even carried by saints as depicted in relief inside rock churches, the symbol of Christianity is triumphant in Ethiopia. The forms of the cross you have seen in this film are the central creation of traditional Christian Ethiopian culture. In the words of Pierre Petridis, designing a cross, making a cross, wearing a cross, became for them a daily act of faith. Haunted by the future, terrified by the hereafter, the Ethiopians placed all their hope of survival and assurance of salvation in the mystical power of that sign which typified victory over death and proclaimed the resurrection.